Hello. Welcome to the vlog. This is the sixth installment of the vlog. Is this seven? No, I'm, I'm not going to have this today. No. It's number so, seven. Today, we have a question, and uh, it's an interesting question. Somebody wrote in and said, we constantly hear wonderful things about your game, but there's a dark side to everything. What are a few things your players really groan about? And rather than trying to answer this question ourselves... We I have good answers for it. No. Shh. We figured we would just bring in some of our players and let them tell you. And we're going to actually go ahead and leave the room so that they can talk without us hearing them without fear of retribution. So we're going to go now. Good luck, everybody. There we go. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey. All right, so we are John and Ann's players. Yes, some of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Amy, and I play Vivian. I'm Thomas, and I play Woody. Folk and, oh, sorry. No, go. Folk Varder, if you didn't hear. <laughs> and uh, I'm Matt, and I play Swilger. Yay. Yay, us. So, uh, what do we gripe about? Yeah. What the, do we groan about? The dark, the dark side of these games. Um... I mean, other the I mean, the horrible, awful thing that we really didn't have a good grasp on that when we hit demigod was all of the fate bonds. Yes, I agree. Dear God, the fate <laughs> bonds, because we all I think we all had a pretty good lock on what we wanted our characters yeah. to be. Yeah, especially you know we specifically chose our parent gods, you know, yeah. with, with character ideas in mind. So like yeah. Vivian was all about death and that was really cool so she was gonna like help usher people to the underworld and that did not happen at all <laughs> they decided that i was not going to be a death god so they bought it all off and i had to just start buying other things um yep. and it was i mean it's interesting because it makes you have to really think about like how you can take what your character is being given and like turn it into like a story for them like how it's going to work out for them, whether they're upset about it and grudgingly accept the, uh, you know, the what's being thrust upon them or, you know, what happens. Sometimes they fight fate bonds ineffectively, but it happens. Yeah, sometimes we fight each other. Uh, no, um, so fate bonds are pretty terrible, but necessary because it's fun. Right. Sometimes they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of the other players and characters, um, Tom, who plays Goes, he decided he was going to take his character and basically fight fate. So that became his new character because of what Fate Bonds were doing to him, which was kind of cool. Whereas, so Wilger, my character, decided he was just going to let Fate take its course. And he was going to let it do whatever was happening to it. So um, that's how uh, I dealt with that. But how about you? Um, I was going to say, with Folk Otter and then also Jenny's character, Yelaxa Cheadle, um, both of them at, at points have ended up with negatives to stamina. And so that ended up being buying almost every stamina and act ever trying to fight the fate bonds and as the and healer of the sometimes party, it works so. as the healer of the party i have to say that i also had to struggle with the fact that people had negative fate bonds to things like stamina and fortitude um it made my job a lot harder but it was also difficult you know with somebody who may have been really good at manipulation starting to lose that and then they weren't as good at doing right. their job anymore so yeah. you know people had to kind of we had to kind of think of other ways to do things so i mean it was interesting and you know it ends up well enough, but uh, it always makes us grumble. Yeah. The I fate think, bonds. Um, the fate bond system was something that was developed while we were playing. So I think if yeah. we had gone into it knowing that that was something that could happen, we would have been a lot more careful on yeah. what we did. That's true, too. But since we didn't know... Um, we just used powers yes. around mortals. What is that? That doesn't no do anything. No consequences, right? Yeah, that's and, just what gods do. And sometimes we failed, and we were just, oh, we failed. Yeah, no, yeah, no big deal. No yeah. big deal. That power didn't work. Uh, it was a big deal. It was a big yeah. deal. Um, well, I was playing a uh, game that was kind of tangential to uh, Thomas and Amy's game, and so I don't know about their interactions, but one thing that could get kind of aggravating is actually how much um, freedom we have in the game. John will plan out a lot of different scenarios and a, like kind of a path that he wants us to, wanted us to go down but he would allow us to just stray off the path if we wanted to or basically do whatever we wanted. And sometimes that would lead us to do something what we call haberdashery. 
and there's a very, I, well they've explained why we call it haberdashery yeah. blog before but real quick if, in case you didn't read that blog post it was basically um our characters to make money in in was it ireland when we were in belfast um mm, yes. we decided that we were going to make some hats and in order to do that we needed to get some goblins and in order to to pay the goblins, we had to make meat pies. So we went to a bakery to make meat pies for the goblins so they can make hats for us so we could sell them. It it was just a really... But John went with it, you know. Right. Um, but it, we wasted a lot of game time. But it turned into a really fun story. It did. So, I mean, it kind of takes away kind of from the epicness to have the mundane little trivialities that our characters have to go through. But it's still fun. It's good comic relief, too. You know, do something yeah. silly. When, it's a good way you know, to blow off steam sometimes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But uh, one thing that would happen in um, my game is that sometimes the characters would butt heads because we had so much freedom. And the way Sewilger used to work as the leader of the group is kind of getting a consensus of the team. Not just of the, not just of the characters, because sometimes characters are weird or stupid or they're just antagonistic by nature and they can't help it. But um, me as the player wanted to get kind of a, you know, a litmus test of the group to see how everyone the player was feeling about what was going to happen next. And because of that, sometimes characters would butt heads and John let this happen, which I think storytellers should yeah. do, like let characters deal with their own stuff. But the only bad thing I would say about that is that it would kind of take up a whole game sometimes. Yeah. It would... Um, there was, uh, one, uh, character in particular, Cha Clark, um, early on, who was a scion of Loki, who just was trying to be a team player, but he was a scion of Loki. So it was just horrible. And sometimes the whole game would revolve around trying to fix something that he did. And it was great that John let it happen. And he was a manipulation character, which usually means that notes are being passed back and forth between that. A player in the ST to make things happen but then sometimes that can just s totally sidetrack a plan that the leader has or something else that's going on in the game and I know as being the player playing the leader in those games that can be really annoying. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm getting ready to be the leader in our uh, Eastern Promises game and yeah. I can already see that starting to happen. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that happens is sometimes John throws a wrench into our plans very similar to that you know where we're like okay you know we have a plan this is what we're going to do and then something will happen and we have to make a really hard decision and that can be really awful you know if you're trying to get somewhere by a certain amount of time and then another god is like hey remember that favor that you owe me you need to go do that right now. Uh, that's pretty annoying, and we hate that. But, again, it makes for a good story. Spoiler alert. There was a lot of that that happened during Ragnarok, and we're not going to tell you what it was. Yeah, we can't. We've been sworn to secrecy. Yeah. But most of, I, w I would assume, most of the gripes, at least that I have, make the game better and make mm -hmm. it more rewarding and enriching. Like, there will be some nights where I will leave this table and just be like, my character can't do any of the things that he's supposed to do. He can't possibly win. He's he's just not cut out. Um, I recently just uh, found out what J. Ortiz's stats are. I forget his I forget his Aztec God's name because I don't respect him. So <laughs> he's horrible. He's yeah, yes, he's him. horrible. But I just found out what his stats are and trying to compare it to Sewilger stats. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way I can ever win in this situation. But I mean, that's not always the case because. He's acting alone where Swilger kind of has a backup team behind him. So it's usually trying to be one strength in a group, not just a solitary strength. Mm -hmm. But there are definitely times where I leave this table and I'm like, that was awesome. This game is so great. Like there's story building, character development, and it's just wonderful. And then there are other times I kind of do the sad Charlie Brown walk to my car <laughs> and just go, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how this is going to work out. So Yeah, there are nights that we go home and like all the way home we're talking about what happened in game and what 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 do you think this is about? Mm -hmm. What do you, how are we going to get out of this? How are we going to get this done? And even like we stay up, we stay after games sometimes and talk about these kind of things with John and Ann and usually Ann has to go to bed, but I mean, we, <laughs> we've, we've been here until four in the morning sometimes just talking about this stuff. Like it's, yeah, it's crazy. One of the really hard things that goes along with that is pretty much all of our characters are so much smarter um, yeah. you know, just know so much more than we do and just having to do as much as we can to figure out where their level would be. Yeah. There might be a lot of, you know, interrupting John saying, okay, remind me who this person is again. 
remind me what right. I should know already. Yeah. That no, I, I think that's a I think that's a really fun part. I think, yeah. um, you know, while we may have gripes about this stuff and say it's all better for the game, not to say that we're awesome, but we are um, yeah. as players. Just because we do a lot of stuff where we don't let it affect each other as people. Yeah. Like, if there's a problem with characters in game, that doesn't usually translate into players having problems. And I think yeah. that's a thing that can turn rough really quick in a game, especially if someone's a manipulation character or a chaos character or an illusion character or something like that. Um, but, like, that never really happens... Like, we'll have problems. Like, I have had problems with characters. Like, I've had problems with Thomas's character before, where Folk Varder is just feeling kind of uppity that day, and so we'll just, just kind of has to deal with it. And But that's never a problem for Thomas and I, like, exactly. hanging out across the table. And I think that comes as being experienced RPers, yeah. you know, having played tabletop and other RP games before. Like, we're just used to keeping out of character separate from in character and vice versa, so... Yeah. yeah, but that's definitely something that could happen. Oh, uh, they're back! Oh no! Oh god! Oh, god. Oh, god. Get out! Um, but no, there. Uh, you know, I wish I had some dirt to be like, oh my god, this game's horrible. You never want to be part of this. It's the worst. But it's like the best thing I've I've ever played. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the the dark side to it is that at the start of a new story for me, the the worst thing besides fate bonds besides having character squabbles that John just lets happen because it's better for stories, is at the start of every game, the mission that you get set on, at least from John's perspective, or the from the perspective of the characters, it's impossible. Oh. Like, when you first set out and a god comes and visits you and like, hey, I don't really have the time to do this or the energy to want to do this, so you're my kid, go take care of this. Yeah. And you're like, who are you? What? what? Am I doing? Why? And who am like, I dealing with? Yeah, and then you kind of get an idea of what you're handling, and it's like, yeah. I have to fight like a whole Titan realm by myself, pretty much. That's what's going on. And it just seems so daunting. But then you get into the game, you get into the week, uh, weeks keep going and going, and your character keeps going, and it just seems to work out. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a really long time, but you eventually yeah. get there. Sometimes, like we said, it doesn't end up going anything like you thought it would. No. Things yeah. happen. Yeah. Um... Yeah, part of part of Scion is always owing somebody a favor, and sometimes you have to do favors for people so that they will do something as part of a quest line for you, so you can go. Do, like, I remember uh, at one point I had, um, as Vivian, I had given. Um, what were we doing that I had to get? Oh, we were we were in the uh, Frost Fairy Realm. The winter, the winter, winter fairy realm, court. winter court. Thank you. Yes. Um, and I had to. We needed transportation, so I actually gave one of uh, the Baron's relics to Jack Frost, so that we could get transportation. And um, that was a bad idea. I should not have done that. And we we had basically an entire storyline uh, that got fucked up because of that. Okay. Um, we you know we had to call in favors so that we could go back to. Uh, Niflheim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niflheim to uh, get Baron. it back from him. Uh, Baron was really mad at me yeah. for a while. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, at, at hero level, the, the stuff that's, like, that's gripey, at least for me, was just um, the enemies are always done to the highest added fighter character. So if you are not a fighter character at hero level for any of the levels really yeah. the enemies are going to be really tough for you like sometimes you get thrown the soldier enemy that you're allowed to fight not allowed to but like that you could possibly fight and win and then there's the boss fight and that's really statted out against the fighter character in the group and sometimes that is kind of disheartening when you are kind of a fighter character but not just a fighter character yes and I agree. um but then after that it's dealing with uh fate bonds Fate Bonds Before God are so much more of a pain in the ass yeah. because you have to That's actually true. deal with the individual Fate Bonds and how those people interact with you. So at like Legend 5, Legend 6, having someone who's like a nemesis or having someone who's like, I don't know, what are the other ones? Um, oh, um... Like, who, who are the uh, people who like, they're not necessarily negative, but they're antagonistic? Tricksters. Tricksters, yeah. yeah, or any of those other characters that you have to deal with. There are people with. that are in love with you, um, that want to do things. There are people who who are your heralds, so they like decide that they need to tell everybody about you. 
Um, yeah. Which, I mean, is cool, but it can also be kind of annoying, you know, having to deal with those people. Not to mention that your fate bond, or, or one particular character's fate bond, is probably fate bound to the rest of the party mm-hmm. yes. with the different yes. fate bonds. Like, one person might be positive to two people and negative to three. And the people that they're negative to just want to get rid of them. But the positive people want them around all the time. So then yeah. you have to deal with that extra level and layer of character work and character interaction. Because one person's like, no, that's my herald. Or no, that's my priest. Like, they're awesome to me. Or my balm. And the other person's like, that person is setting traps every time I walk into a building so that exactly. something explodes in my face. Yeah. And it's not fun. Um, but yeah, again... But it kind of is at the yeah. same time. Yeah, no, it's a, lo- <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun if you can allow yourself, the player, to have fun yeah. with the shenanigans. Yes. So... And I have to say, you know, all the things that we've been griping about have been, like, in-game story-related things, but I really don't have any problems with anything mechanically. No. Like, I, I just kind of let John and Anne write things, and I go with <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, try it. Um, if they say, oh, this boon or this knack does something different, okay, that's yeah. fine. I, I don't know anything about that. You guys are the experts, so we'll go with that. Yeah. I think the only thing really, um, not necessarily mechanically, but just... Well, I guess like the group mechanics related that sometimes gets annoying is uh, we talked about it in another blog entry where if we are all split up, like at god level, it's really easy to get back from being split up. But at lower levels, um, yeah, getting lo- back together. Yeah, um, when we're apart, and especially if you've just done your scene and it's somebody else's turn for a while, and you know you know what you're gonna do next time you get back, just. You know, it's interesting to see what's going on in the other one, but it's really, really easy to get distracted. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's, like, the biggest problem I have, probably. Well, I think the the thing to piggyback off of that was Ragnarok. Yes. We can't give you any notes. We can't give yeah. you any hints about what happened. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was amazing. But it was days long, mm-hmm. and there were many times where individuals were separated so that someone would be role-playing a thing out, a, a scene out with John for like an hour or 45 minutes and everyone else in the room just kind of had to keep their mind where they were in yeah. their scene right. without doing anything else and that can get really really tough to just because you get bored you get bored or you're you're just so into the other person's scene listening to them and then but you forget to get you your forget, role ready yeah. or, or or just like what your motivations were yeah. in, in that second like oh i was really angry at that guy but Half an hour's passed. Yeah. That anger really isn't there anymore for my character. So mm-hmm. it's uh, four a.m. Oh, yeah. having, oh having man, having trouble focusing. Yeah, it's like six in the morning, and someone has to work in an hour. Yeah, that or, was fun. Um, and but John was talked about that in the blogs too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it was a, it was, it was a great experience. It was the the biggest, most epic thing I've ever seen yeah. uh, for a game like this. So, um, and I mean, we all had fun coming out of it. Yeah, so. Uh, there, there wasn't that big of a downside to that. I'm trying to think of something else that I had like a gripe of. Oh, mechanics. Um, not we haven't run into too many mechanics just because when we played original Scion, when the rules just came out, we were cracking open the books and being <laughs> oh, like, yeah. "Oh wow, what does this power do?" That was so long ago, and John and Anne have revamped the system so many times that I know their system way better than I know yeah. the books. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the only thing mechanically. I think, uh, I actually had a talk with John about this, was um, higher level boon powers. Mm -hmm. Because in the book, they just get kind of silly. Like, some of them are okay, Mm -hmm. but um, with Sewildra, I actually started talking to him about god level stuff. And um, for Sun, it's like solar crown and fusion. And it's like, kind of okay, but kind of not okay. So he threw around some ideas trying to figure stuff out. But... um, I'm really looking forward to mechanically what John and Anne are going to do with avatars. Yes. We've experienced avatars in game from gods, and it's just like all hell breaks loose. But that's only for death. I think I've only seen a god in death avatar. Not like death the purview, but like the god died, so that avatar yes. gets activated yes. and just stuff happens. Yeah. But we've never actually seen a god in avatar form doing, doing something in a scene yeah. um, where he, contro- he or she controlled it. Yeah. So we've I'm had actually, it happen like off screen, like we've had things where you know, yeah, you know, Odin was like, oh, well, you need this person, this person to get this done, and I'll, you know, we'll have to get three magic gods, and they'll have right. to blow the weird, and you know, do whatever. So that all happened off screen, but we haven't seen it yet. And uh, John and Anne have been really good about you know revamping things as we move up in mm-hmm. Legend. Mm-hmm. So you know, 
I'm sure that they'll be getting to things like Avatar very soon since we're approaching, uh, Leg- well, we're not really approaching Legend 11, we just hit 10, but, right. um, yeah. you know. But it's coming up, and I that's mechanically, I don't know how it's going to work, but yeah. that's the thing I'm excited about, just to see what Avatars are going to be like. We trust them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And for us, you know, it has to be really different, because in other games, if you don't have to buy all the boons in order, you know, it's easier to get the high-level stuff, whereas, yeah. and so it may not have to be as powerful, but yeah. As, since we've had to, you know, buy all of them, the ones that as you get up, they they need to be a lot more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, so, uh, is that? So yeah, it's kind of a grape session. Are we done? I think we done? made them sound better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. than Mo- we most, started. Most things that there's a dark side, there's also a reason why it's there. Yeah. 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 Um, Let's see. Yeah. John's not a tyrant. Uh, very, very well. It's it's not very often where he just goes. That just happens. Right. Yeah. He's usually got an explanation, or he's usually got a way for a character to try and role play out of a situation, or do whatever that character feels they need to do in a situation, and not get their face melted off because they're somewhere they shouldn't be. And if we're completely brain dead about it, you know, he's not, uh, he's not opposed to slipping us a hint about something yeah. that could yeah. even work. Right. Very. It's it it almost rarely happens where John will go. Well, your character doesn't know, so you don't know. Mm-hmm. It'll be like, well. This member in your party has perfect memory. They might know. Right. You should ask them what yeah. they remember. There's almost or, always an in-game way to go about to, things to fix yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. and so. if the party's really some, and like we'll take breaks if like there's actual animosity happening because mm-hmm. a group decision can't be met. Um, like something like that'll happen, but it's very very rare, mm-hmm. and um, it's a, it's a it's an aggravating game. It's fun, but it's aggravating. And um, I wouldn't stop playing, no. you know. Ever. Yeah, ever. We're going to be playing when we're 50. Forever. No, I'm really excited because living in a home as old people <laughs> and just having this to do all day is kind of like a dream <laughs> now. So, like, uh, you yeah. know. Be prepared for that. I think yeah. one dark side with that is I'm not sure that I could ever go back and play just D&D or something. Oh, Because I, that was always much more of like a railroading kind of experience. And no, the D10 system. just has so it's, many more options. So there's so much freedom in it. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't go back to something so restricted. Like I mean, D&D. I loved it, but I love this more. Yeah. Well, and even though the, the culture with D&D is kind of deep and rich with the books that have been written and yeah. stuff, mm-hmm. but this is actual history. This yeah, is mythology. actual mythology yeah. that's like you're dealing with and delving into. And John and Anne went and got degrees in this. They did online degrees for this stuff, and yeah. they are so knowledgeable about it now that it's yeah. amazing. But, um, yeah... Honestly, wish I could give you some dirt, but I don't have anything. I so wish I could. Oh, my God. I can't wait until Anne writes this stuff. It's going to be amazing. So, <laughs> yeah. yay. All right. Okay, I guess we'll get our ST. Oh, there they yep, are. Yeah, there they are. They so, hey. Hey. we're done. Uh, here's John and Anne back. Yay. yay. Hey. So, thank you guys thank for you coming. Everybody. No problem. We gave them yes. cookies, so hopefully they said good things about us. That was to encourage you to do the vlog, not to It was all the cookies. Them. They're horrible. They're horrible. Just done. Bye, everybody. Bye.